Welcome to Visions of Victory, Picturing the Spanish-American War. This gallery presentation was made possible by the generous donation of Frederick and Jean Scharf. This particular accumulation of artwork and books expresses the visual history of the Spanish-American War through art in newspapers and through photographs and book covers. Yellow journalism was at its heyday in the Spanish-American War. William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer battled out for newspaper readership in their competitive rag magazines. They used chromolithography, color printing to attract more readership, and they sent artists to the war front in Cuba on behalf of America to draw and express these images. On February 15, 1898, the battleship USS Maine mysteriously exploded and sank in Havana Harbor. This event triggered the Spanish-American War, which was a series of clashes between the United States and Spain, which was over the control of the Spanish colonies in the Caribbean, but chiefly for the sake of creating an independent Cuba. This exhibit, Visions of Victory, displays periodical illustrations, books, and other items, primarily from this Cuban and Caribbean phase of the wars, to explore how American and British publications formed a visual impression of the war in an era before widespread photojournalism and before half-tone printing in newspapers. It was up to artists and engravers in the newspaper industry to create the images that complemented the written accounts of the battle that were used to incite and excite the public in favor of these wars. But whether these images appeared in the form of newspaper illustrations, broadsides, or frameable works of art, they were circulated within the commercial marketplace rather than by state propaganda agencies. So the excitement and the interest and the promotion of the war was actually promoted through these newspapers that were read by the public. And two factors were particularly important in shaping the production of images during this time. Um, one of them was chromolithography, which is the development of color printing. And color printing was used again in newspapers or it was used in beautiful painting-like wall hangings that the public were able to purchase and hang in their homes and keep as keepsakes of the war. And the other was formatted printing in books, massive printing of books that would be used as souvenirs and kept in homes and reread of the exciting battles that happened. Juan, 
and the American Navy was able to decimate a lot of those ships that would have gone to war in Cuba. What's really exciting about this picture is Charles John de Lacy was a really talented British artist who was actually in the British Navy himself, so he was very good at depicting these warships. However, what's really important to note is that he himself had not been sent down to the front to do the picture. As a matter of fact, the picture was created by him, but not at the front. So it was an imaginary rendition of the battle. There was no way for the newspaper to be able to print a timely rendition of these ships because it took time to ship drawings that were made on the front all the way back to England or the United States to be printed in the newspaper. So what you see here is a magnificent warship in great detail and looking extremely beautiful and statuesque and capable in the open sea, but it wasn't the ship that took down the Spanish ships at the Battle of San Juan. This is actually a chromolithograph, and it's a rendition of the Battle of Santiago of Cuba. The Battle of Santiago of Cuba was the most successful and bloodiest battle at sea in which the Americans had a decisive victory over the Spanish. Admiral Schley, which you can see depicted in the corner of the painting, decisively decimated Admiral Cervantes' ships. And this chromolithograph is an imagined rendition of what happened. There were chromolithographers and printers in Philadelphia at this time who were very successful in creating these souvenir drawings and chromolithographic prints for the American public so they can hang them in, in very elaborate frames such as you see here in their homes, in middle class homes, where they wouldn't have been able to afford getting an oil painting, let's say, or an original work of art done, but they can get this beautifully rendered imagine rendition of what happened at that very important and exciting battle scene with a chromolithographic print that was printed en masse by the J. Hoover Company in Philadelphia. And you can see here, um, the ship was, the American ship is actually quite huge and modern looking and clean and effective. You can see the cannons shooting out towards the Spanish ships, which are totally crumbled and decimated in the sea. And you can see the Spanish Navy, the actual individuals in the Navy, falling into the water hopelessly in this uh, extremely um, one-sided battle in which the Americans were completely in overpowering the Spanish. Um, and part of the excitement of this war was because of the American Navy, and this is another reason why the British actually were also very excited. The British had a very strong naval force, and they were very much in line with the American thinking that a strong and effective and modern navy was important to imperial colonialism. There are some beautiful colors. You can see the American flag. You can see the naval signal flags in their correct color, correct colors. And the ocean waves coming in and unfortunately drowning the Spanish at sea. Spanish-American War and also to serve as souvenir keepsakes for Americans to reread the battles. But in fact, not just adult books were published. Children's books also glorify the Spanish-American War by providing visuals and copy that reflected the propaganda of the war. For example, we have a young people's history of the war with Spain in which the Queen of Spain was actually forgiven for being the queen of a country that was cruel and brutal. We also have a seesaw, ABC's book, and the ABC's book, which went through the letters of the alphabet and often showed drawings of children. And a lot of the times the boys were in sailor suits and riding on ships 
and playing with toys that looked like boats because these things were very important to the imagery of the Spanish American War. In fact, at the letter V, there's a picture of a beautiful battleship with the American flag flying. It says V is for victory. Out on the sea, the warship returns with her flag floating free. And of course, that's the victorious end for the Americans of the Spanish American. Publishers bindings showed off these books in a new decorative light. There would be silver stamping or gilt gold stamping on the covers and illustrative depictions of soldiers marching through the hills or bright colors that would attract people to purchase these books and have them as keepsakes. In particular, this one, the 98 campaign of the 6th Massachusetts uh, Regiment was by Lieutenant Effie Edwards, and the book does have a beautiful decorative cover showing these soldiers marching through what they called San Juan Hill, which was actually in Cuba. Now, the 6th Regiment was really interesting because it was the only racially integrated military unit at the time in the war, and Frank Edwards proudly provides the military roster for this all-African-American company, and it's accompanied with a photograph of its commanding officers. So you see the African-American men proudly wearing their uniforms to fight in defense of the 